It was a risk that our economists had flagged, so hats off to them. Um, we were worried that we would see only 50 basis points of cuts in the 2024 projections, which okay. is where we ended up. Uh, but clearly it's a challenge to the market that has been clinging to this uh, view of a rate cycle turning for so long. And we clearly did get a bit of a positioning washout yesterday. Um, people are uh, in steepness and anything that puts pressure on front end rates is going to be unpleasant. Mm, I, I was um, just at the wall now talking through their latest economic forecast as well and the forecast I think are cr pretty remarkable as well because they've upgraded growth, they've downgraded the unemployment rate, they've downgraded their inflation forecast I mean, this all seems super positive for the Fed, uh, possibly the most successful monetary tightening of policy ever. Yes. I mean if they can pull that off then uh, hats off not just to our economists but even more so to the Fed but it does to me seem a little bit like a cake and eating it type of forecast right mm. at some point um, you either would expect the unprecedented policy tightening cycle that we've had to have some kind of economic cost associated with it or um, for um, a resilient uh, growth backdrop to just not deliver that further mm. decline in inflation that the Fed continues to look for so the forecasts seem a little mm. tricky to me. Have you changed or will you be changing your forecast of when you think the first rate, cut, rate cuts is going to come through from the Fed? Uh, we still have them in June of next year. Um, that's our economist's call that has not been changed. Uh, look, that's a long way away. Mm. But to be fair, our forecast does also uh, assume that we will get inflation on a continuous decline from here on in. So there isn't. Mm. Uh, much standing in the way from the Fed actually fulfilling much of what the market is pricing in. I think what the Fed is trying to avoid is a situation where financial conditions ease too early for them to actually deliver that softest of soft landings that they've uh, currently forecast. Mm, so what does this all mean for yields then? We're watching the March higher in yields, uh, incessant March higher. It's, it's a, uh, a new cycle high. Are they going to stop around this level? If you'd asked me three months ago, I would have said yes, definitely. Um, we have capitulated on our bullish uh, duration bias in the US. Um, mm -hmm. And the big driver of that was the fact that positioning just has not adjusted. Investors are still long, and therefore the pain trade is for rates to go higher. And until we see a much more meaningful turn in the data, which is going the wrong way, um, it's difficult to see how that stops anytime soon. Now, um, I'm not going to call for much higher rates from here, but I would argue that um, for choice, we would still rather be short the front end than mm. long the back end. Interesting. Okay. Uh, let's turn to the Bank of England today. Uh, it's it split. I, I don't know if your economists have changed their view after the UK they inflation front yesterday. So are they still going for a hike? They're still going for a hike. And um, I have a lot of sympathy with that view. What surprised on the downside yesterday was uh, core services. And with, within core services was hotels and airlines. These are very volatile components. I find it difficult to believe that the Bank of England is going to turn on a dime just because of that one print. Now, mm. granted, everything else that we've seen has also started to come in softer and starts to confirm the turn in the UK economy. But the UK does have the most entrenched inflation problem, we think, out of all the majors. So mm -hmm. one more hike to us seems more likely than not. And from a risk management perspective, from a credibility perspective, I think is what the Bank of England will go for. Mm.